Hey, everybody, this is a preview of today's members episode. If you want to hear the whole thing, head on over to the confessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, and become a member today. Wait, 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 wait. Before you go skipping the intro, I know you guys like doing that. Last year we came out with The Shape of Shadows. This year we're doing Sasquatch and Missing Man. Me and Wes Germer from Sasquatch Chronicles, you know the guy. We went to Ground Zero where he had his Bigfoot encounter and we investigated. We hunted the Bigfoot and crazy stuff happened. If you want to see that documentary, we are doing a world premiere on May 5th. That's Sunday, May 5th. If you want tickets to that event, link is in the description below. Go ahead and check it out. Get your tickets and go ahead and skip the intro now. Merkel Media. This was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave, and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. But the giant moves. He's got a spear in one hand, and he's running really fast. And spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody yells, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge, and I blow his head off. I feel something pulling at my leg, and I look over, and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reach my hand into this bush, and I touch air. Couldn't breathe, and I couldn't move, because I know I'm seeing a monster. Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Merkel. Thanks for being here. If you have a crazy, wild experience you want to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is contact at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's contact at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section, and you can reach me that way as well. Other words for me, just get a hold of me. Listen, friends, it's coming this Sunday, the world premiere of Sasquatch and the Missing Man. If you haven't got your tickets yet, it's not too late. All you got to do is go to moment.co slash Sasquatch to get your tickets and you can watch the live premiere right there on that website. Moment.co slash Sasquatch gets you the tickets, the pass to get into the live premiere right there on that same website. This coming Sunday, May 5th, Sasquatch and the Missing Man. Me and my team went to Washington to meet up with Wes Germer to go to Ground Zero where he had his Bigfoot encounters. We documented the journey. We met several people who had Bigfoot experiences, bizarre things happening to them. And that's all coming this Sunday, May 5th on moment.co slash Sasquatch. I hope to see you there. Get your tickets right now. Link is in the description below. All right, friends. Listen, we have a great show coming up here for you because we have this guy, Hunter, who was given to me by another guy who was a former guest on the show, The Bean Wizard. The Bean Wizard contact. If you guys don't know The Bean Wizard, go ahead, check him out. He has a huge following. Millions of people follow him on TikTok, on Instagram. And he was on the show to share his experience of going to a kid's camp when he was a counselor and coming across this demonically possessed kid. And his story was actually reciprocated by another former guest who they both were counselors at the same camp They both had the same experience and then years later share the same experience on this show. So it's funny how the whole world operates that way. But the Bean Wizard contacts me and said, hey, listen, I know this one guy who is right up your alley. You got to talk to him because he's walked through a portal. And I'm like, "Uh, yeah, I got to talk to this guy. And so Hunter comes on today to talk about when he was in high school, him and his friends broke into a abandoned house, a house that nobody was living in. And they were exploring it. And what was weird is that they found blueprints of this house. And on the blueprints, you could see the different rooms they they were going to explore and go into. But there was one room that was not on the blueprints. And to get to that room, you had to go through a closet. 
And when you go into this room, it was like they traversed another realm. And there was things in this room, books in this room. And one of the books they brought back with them. And some crazy stuff happened after they did that. So let's get to Hunter and this experience he had traversing realms and bringing back books with him right now. All right. Today we have Hunter on the show. Hunter, how are you? Good, Tony. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm good, man. So listen, uh, I had a hunter on recently, and so you're not that hunter. But it's not every day you get a hunter on the show, and we got two in relatively close distance. So, uh, you know, what are the odds? I guess. Yeah, not not a very common name like, anymore. I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a hey, it's a great name, but it's a great uh, name, strong name, strong name, strong uh, name. I know you've heard it before. I'm going to do it anyways because I'm an old man. I have kids, and I could do dad jokes. Hey, hunter, do you hunt? <laughs> <laughs> I used to. I have. I haven't been in a number of years, but no. I got you. I got you. Um, Yeah. So listen, man, you were brought to me by the Bean Wizard. Uh, Yeah. Common friend, Justin. uh, He was on for a member show. Just to let people know about that a little bit, because not everybody listening might be a member. Um, Justin, so years ago, I had a guy on my show. His name was Emmett. And um, he lived in Vermont. And he had an experience with a white upright walking dog hunter i know you're new to all this stuff but we call him around here these parts we call him dog man and uh he had this experience with this creature in the woods while he was hunting and it was um i I think i I think i called it something like you know vermont's white dog man or something like that i don't know hunter sees dog man something uh it's on youtube somewhere uh but the the story that he shared for that was one thing. It was a public show. And then we did what we call sometimes an overtime where we we do an extended conversation with somebody and we go in uh, to an overtime and that's for members only. And uh, he had a, a totally different story to share. It wasn't anything to do with dog man. He was a counselor at a kid's camp, uh, like a Christian kid's camp. And he talked about how there's this one kid, and I don't know if it was his real name or fake, but he called him Zachary on the show. And uh, Zachary was... Uh, ornery, uh, bad attitude, troublemaker type kid. And uh, it all, I, the, the thing that always strikes me is the thing where, where all the paranormal craziness started was when Zachary was at the, the dining hall and he had asked for extra carrots or something. And so they were like, no, you don't need carrots yet. Just finish what you have. And he kept on saying he wanted it. So they're like, okay, but you got to eat it all. Well, the kid didn't want to eat any of it then. And so they were kind of going back and forth with them. And, uh, Emmett had said, you know, Zachary, you got to eat these things. Now, Emmett's standing there with Justin. So Justin, the bean wizard, uh, is there as well. And they're standing there talking to Zachary. And then Zachary just looks at him and goes, no. And when he says no, they both pass out. They just, they drop out. They they wake up in, in the nurse's office. And that starts the domino of what would be... Uh, a very dramatic experience for both of them. And Emmett's sharing this story about how this all unfolded and how this kid seemed to have been uh, more on the the possessed side. And uh, the thing was that the thing that I found funny was uh, Justin just so happened to hear that episode. Like, I don't even think he knew about my show, but he heard Emmett talking. And he's like, oh, let me listen to this. And then he hears about the overtime. So he actually paid to become a member just to listen to the overtime. And uh, just to let people know, what I, the episode I'm talking about is episode 387, the overtime with this story. The de- I call it the, the demon boy, uh, overtime 387. And um, he, he just tells this story about this kid who seemed to have a lot of demonic attachments that he seemed to might have had some kind of control over. And uh, it was just very uh, a fascinating story. Well, uh, Justin then for episode 567 came on to tell that story from his perspective. And uh, it just so happens that Justin is the Bean Wizard, which if anybody doesn't know, the Bean Wizard is a very famous TikToker, uh, millions of followers. And uh, so ha- just so happens that the Bean Wizard was there when the Demon Boy dropped bodies. So... <laughs> uh, Anyways, that's how we got connected because you work with the Bean Wizard. I do. uh, I do. And he contacts me 
And I remember I was sitting in my basement uh, trying to relax and not think about these things and probably watch something, you know, mundane on Netflix. And <laughs> he uh, ruined it for you. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he, he said to me, I got, a, I got a guy you got to talk to. I'm like, okay, bro. And, uh, and then he tells me that, and I'm not going to spoil the story. I want you to tell the story. But he, he goes, this guy walked through a portal. I jumped out of the, off the couch. I spilled my popcorn everywhere. And I'm like frantically texting with mumbo jumbo stuff that doesn't make any sense because my thumbs are fat. And uh, he, he oh. got the message though. And that's how this all kind of came together. Um, it's not every day I get to talk to somebody who's walked through a portal, but I have done that before. And what's interesting is I don't know your story because we talked on the phone. We've talked before this recording started, and I said I didn't want to hear a story until we start recording. But from the things that you have said to me already, I have a feeling what you might have experienced is going to be a little similar to the person I'm thinking of. So with that said, no pressure, Hunter, I want you to share with us what the heck took you from living a normal life to portal jumping. So it's it's crazy, right? So we, this was probably 16 years ago. Okay. Um, so I mean, I'm 32, so I was 16. We had all just got our driver's license. And what do you do when you're a 16 year old kid who just got their driver's license? You drive, you just go everywhere, anywhere and everywhere. You're exploring every single road you possibly can. And so we were going down this road in the town we lived in. It's called summit road and it's a dead end road. Okay. So as we're going down, we see this house the standalone house. There's no other houses around it. And so we live up in new England, up in New Hampshire. And there's, it's just a house field, huge field. Okay. And this house has a fence around it. So us being teenagers, we're curious, why does this house have a fence around it? So we parked and we kind of, we start checking it out. We're like, okay, this is interesting. We're going around and we are trying to look inside, but every single window on this house is boarded up. Doors are boarded up. Windows are all boarded up. And now we're even more curious. We just, we really want to check this out. We wanted to know why, why this is all blocked off. Why is it fenced like this? So we managed to get around the fence. Um, we actually kind of pulled the fence up and then we used a couple two by fours that we found and we used those to prop the fence that we all crawled under. Um, and so we went to the bulkhead of the house, which wasn't locked for whatever reason. They boarded everything else up, but they didn't lock the bulkhead. So when you open the bulkhead, there was no stairs to go down. So we hopped down into the foundation of this house. Um, no, I'm sorry to backtrack a little bit. We kind of planned this out a little bit. We went and got flashlights and everything because we figured we wouldn't be able to see when we went inside. Yeah. Um, so we all had like our stuff. We had flashlights and we had, you know, all this kind of stuff. And we go inside and it brings you into the basement. There's nothing in the basement. Everything has been taken out. And we make our way through the basement, you know, trying to navigate it. And we make our way up a thing of stairs to go up into what led into a kitchen. So in the kitchen, there is cabinets in your typical kitchen. They had a, you know, uh, an island in, in the middle. And on the island, there was blueprints for the whole house. So we're, you know, we're like, okay, a map. <laughs> we, we know how to get around this house now. So we take the blueprints and we're using the blueprints to kind of find our way around the house. And we're just exploring. We're just checking it out. We're seeing if there's anything cool that we can find. Um, so we get through the whole downstairs. There's nothing, you know, there's just random like trash kind of everywhere, but not like a lot, not like anybody even squatting there or anything like that. Um, so we go upstairs and in one of the rooms we're we're going through it and we look at one of the closets and in the closet, like in the back, instead of like a full wall, there's a double door that was about chest height, maybe, maybe a little bit less, just a double door. And it's not on the blueprints at all. So we open it up and it leads into another room. So we go in this room and there are just books, books, of books on books, just stacks of books all along the walls, the center of the room, just books, so many books, some as tall as me, some only knee height, but just books everywhere. So 
Now, here's where it gets weird because, like I said, everything was boarded on the outside of the house. But the window for this room had no board and there was sunlight coming through. We didn't need flashlights anymore. There was just, there, there was light shining into the room. And my, my friend, I was, it, so it was me, my friend Kevin, Jake, Eli, and I think Arlen was with us. So my friend Kevin goes to the middle of the room with one of the stacks of the books and that he picks up this book and it's just a red book, no text on the cover, nothing on the binding, just a red book. So he opens the book and inside is a stamped four leaf clover, dried out stamped four leaf clover inside of the book. So he, we, you know, Kevin starts flipping through the book and all of us are kind of standing over his shoulder, like looking at it, seeing what, you know, what caught his attention. And at first we thought it was little red riding hood because there's a little girl in a meadow with a tree line behind her in the book. Um, and she's got a red hood on, she's got a picnic basket and we're like, Oh, it's a little red riding hood. And we can, you can see in the background in the tree line, a shadow like in a big cloak. And we thought it was the wolf. So he kept flipping. And as you keep going through, there's just like a picture every other somewhat on page. And the figure gets closer and closer and closer. Until you get to the, the last picture in the book where the figure's gone. And now the little girl is kneeling down in this meadow. Her hood is off. And I'll never forget this picture as long as I live. Her hood is off. Her pony, she had two, she was a blonde girl, hair and braids running down the back of her head. She's kneeling down in, in the meadow, the picnic baskets next to her on her left side. And now she has horns coming out of her forehead. And she's kneeling down and she's touching her forehead. Like, and there's little nubs coming out of her forehead now. So we see that and all of us are like, oh, okay, what? This is not little red riding hood. This is, that is not what this is. And I can't even begin to explain the feeling of dread that washed over my body. This absolute feeling of you, you ever, you ever gone somewhere and you felt unwanted. Oh yeah. All the time. Yeah. Every time I all, put, put all a show out sometimes. Right. <laughs> so I, I can't even be like, it was coming from inside of me. Like everything in my body was screaming get out get out of here and it wasn't just me everybody in the room like simultaneously was like we shouldn't be here we should not be here right and it just it, i started feeling claustrophobic and just like i felt like this heavy like heavy pressure so we all went back out that double door and we go back downstairs we go into the the kitchen and we could try to go in the basement and the basement door is stuck can't open it so now we're freaking out. Okay. And I like, it was so, so Jake, Arlen, Eli, and Kevin all go to the front door and all are just mule kicking this door to get it open. And I'm standing there with flashlights going like this. Cause I, it like that, that we, that feeling followed us all the way through the house. It was so unwelcoming. And so they managed to break the door and we got outside. Okay. So we got out. Once we're outside, we, Kevin shows us he kept the book. So he brought the book with him. Okay. Kevin brought the book home. So here's where everything gets crazy. And then like makes me now when people try to tell me like, oh, you were just being paranoid. You saw something weird and it freaked you out. Kevin brought the book home. Kevin kept it in his desk, in his computer desk. And he lived in the basement of his house. Kevin started hearing and experiencing very weird things, just like things he couldn't explain. He, like his washing machine, it sounded like his washing machine was broken. It was trying to rattle itself. Then he was getting annoyed. He went over and he would unplug it and it would still do the same thing. Okay. Just hearing weird noises, hearing almost like hearing people whisper. And he started to get freaked out by it. So one day we were hanging out with this kid, Eric, who, 
was told us, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm really into this kind of stuff. Can I come, can I come see this book? You know, we told him this, but that whole story. We're like, yeah. Kevin's like, yeah, come on over, check out the book. Sure. So we all go back to Kevin's house. Kevin goes downstairs into the basement. He gets the book, brings the book out. Kevin opens the book. The four leaf clover is still inside of it, but the book is blank. This was a preview of today's member episode. If you want to hear the whole thing, head on over to the confessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button and become a member today.